Welcome to another message from Discover the Word Missionary Baptist Church. DiscoverTheWord.com, SermonAudio.com slash DTW. And uh, also on YouTube, Discover the Word with Dr. Jim on YouTube. We're going to go back into history again. Uh, these are This is the best set of history classes that I've ever done. We're reading now from uh, Samuel Moreland's. I'm going to hold it up here where you can see it. If I can get to the camera here a little bit. Samuel Moreland, History of the Evangelical Churches of the Valleys of Piedmont, and it's printed in 1658. A rare book. Dr. Conrad Glover went to Rome and England and he found this book while he was in Europe in a library there and he took it back and uh, gave it to the Bogard Press, I believe it is, and uh, or somebody. Let's see who, who who printed it, maybe. Maybe it'll say. I don't see that anywhere so far. Reprinted in 1982 in the USA by the Church History Research Archives in, in Greystone Drive, Gallatin, T Tennessee. And so uh, that's when it was printed. It, uh, <clears throat> it is quite a book. The churches of the valleys of the Piedmont go all the way back, I believe. They say they go all the way back to the apostles. I think how they trace themselves is they were in Asia Minor, in that area there, and they had a lot of persecution. And the churches, the Catholic Church, of course, was in Constantinople at that time. It went from Rome to Constantinople, the head of the Catholic Church, the capital. And they ran them out of there. A lot of them, that was not possible for them to be there alive. So they ran off and they went up into the Alps and uh, in the valleys of the Piedmont. And they hid out there for hundreds of years. They were very evangelical in their areas and their people. They raised their children to be Christians. They uh, didn't baptize the children. They, they taught them. The Word of God, they preached almost every day. Uh, here for about 28 pages, it tells all about different things. And uh, the different people that were talking about them. Here's a letter in 800 A.D. and a letter in 1000 A.D. And here's a letter in 1487, 1501, 1502, 1592, 1630. But they had been there for hundreds of years in 880. Now, more people came out of there after Muhammad came on the scene over here. We look up here to Muhammad now. And uh, after he came on the scene, by, 16, by 600 and something, uh, he had uh, declared war on the world, basically on all Christians and all religions. And we're going to bring them underneath submission. The, the word Islam means submission. They bring them under submission or kill them. And so uh, they chased the rest of them out of there. They chased the Christians after they got in there. They got into Constantinople and they took over there. And they, uh, the rest of the Christians that were hiding out in that area in Asia Minor went on up into the valleys of Piedmont again. So they had a new influx of people. It talks about all the different edicts against them. They would say, people would say, well, these people didn't exist, uh, and they'd say that in 1500. But you go back there and you find edicts against them two and three hundred years before that, the same people. The Waldenses were basically the Bogomils. Here we have, the, they were the Paulicians. Here you come over here, the Albanenses, the Arnoldists, and here you have the Waldenses right here, the Henricians. All of these are the same people. And they go all the way back here for hundreds of years. Montanus, the Puritans, the Paterines, 
all of these, the Donatists, all of these were the same Christian people. They were Baptists by practice and faith. Now I'm going to read to you, this one goes back, way, off, way back. By the way, this book is 709 pages. 709 pages. It's written in Old English. I can read Old English, but a lot of people can't do that because they're not familiar with it, but I have read a lot of history books. And uh, so reading Old English is basically like a re reading English to me. I might stumble a little bit here or there. An ancient confession of faith of the Waldenses copied out of certain manuscripts bearing a date of uh, 1120 A.D. Now I can go over there in uh, John Lawrence von Moshein's history and we'll go back. It'll, it'll go back to 1100 A.D. and it'll say a thousand years before that or so. The people went all the way back. This is what they said they believed. They were trying them for heresy, by the way. And this is what they say. This is what they believe. They're defending their faith and what they believe. It said before this, and this is 1128, and it says they were, they had records of them all the way back 400 years before that, and they were 400 years and 500 and 600 and 700 years before Calvin and Luther. They were the first people protesting the Catholic Church and what they believed. They were not Protestants. Yeah, Baptists are not Protestants. They're pre-Protestants. What the Protestants did later, they did well, a thousand years before. We believe and firmly hold all that which is con contained in the twelve articles of the symbol, which is called the Apostles' Creed, according to heresy, whatsoever, in uh, disagreeing and not uh, and so consonant, to the said twelve articles. Article 2, we believe that there is one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We acknowledge the Holy, the Holy Canonical books, and then he names all the books from Genesis all the way through uh, Malachi, and, uh, and Job, and Psalms, etc. They did not, uh, said here, here follow the books of the Apocrypha which are not received of the Hebrews. But we read them and learn from them, the Apocrypha. It talks about them, it talks about different uh, the different Gospels and what they believe from the Gospels and all of that. It says the Acts of the Apostles and all the Epistles of Paul and to the Romans and Timothy and Titus and Philemon and Hebrews and James and First and Second Peter and First and Second First, Second and Third John, and then the Revelation of John. <coughs> it said the books above said teach this that there is but one God Almighty. <coughs> all wise, all good, who has made all things by his goodness. For he formed Adam in his own image and the likeness, but that by envy of the devil and the disobedience of the said Adam sin has entered into the world, and that we are sinners in Adam and by Adam. That Christ was promised to our fathers <coughs> who received the law, that the knowing by the law their sin of unrighteousness and insufficiency, they might desire the coming of Christ to be satisfied for their sins and accomplish the law by himself. Article 6 now. That Christ was born in the time appointed by God the Father. That is to say that in time when all iniquity abounded, not for the cause of good works, for all were sinners, but that he might show them, show us grace and mercy and being faithful. Galatians 4 and 4. When the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his Son, made of a woman, made unto the law, that he might redeem those who were under the law. And that's exactly what they're copying and quoting right there. That Christ is our life, 
truth, peace, and righteousness, as also our Passover, our pastor, that is, advocates, sacrificed, priests, and died for the salvation of all those that believe and is risen for our justification. In like manner, we firmly hold that there is no other mediator or advocate, and that's putting away with the priest now, remember? Advocate with God, and this is, this thing goes back to probably about 600 A.D. now. Remember, Advocate with God the Father, save only Jesus Christ, and as for the Virgin Mary, that is, we, was holy, humble, and full of grace, and in like manner we do believe in concerning all other saints, that being in heaven they await for the resurrection of their bodies at the day of judgment, basically just like we do. Number nine, Article of Faith. We believe that after this life there are two places, one for the saved and the other for the damnation, damned. The which two places we call paradise and hell. Absolutely denying that purgatory invented by the Antichrist and forged contrary to the truth. I'll look back up here in the period of time where purgatory is. Purgatory here is uh, 700 AD. That's when it was invented by the Catholic Church. So this goes back to that period of time. And they say that they denounce that belief. <clears throat> Article number 10 now. We have always accounted as the unspeakable abomination before God all those inventions of men, namely the feast and the vigils of the saints, the water which they call holy, the likewise abstain from flesh upon certain days and the like, but especially their masses. They said that they don't believe in all the priests of the Catholic Church and especially their masses. Their masses are when they turn Jesus into a wafer and his blood into the wine, or the wine into his blood. Article number 11. We esteem for an abomination as anti-Christians all those human inventions which are a trouble or a prejudice to the liberty of the spirit. Let me read that to you again. We esteem for an abomination as anti-Christian all those human inventions which are a trouble or prejudice to the liberty of the spirit. Those traditions and those things are talking about baptism. They were trying to cause her, them to baptize their children. And they said that was an invention of the anti-Christian people. Number 12, we believe that the sacraments are signs of a holy thing. Our visible forms of invisible grace accounted it good that the faithful sometimes use the said signs as visible forms if it may be done. They were having trouble baptizing people and, and taking the Lord's Supper because they would get killed but they'd hide out and do it. However, we believe and hold that the above said faithful may be saved without receiving the signs aforesaid, without baptism and the Lord's Supper. In case they have no place or any means to use them, we acknowledge no other sacrament but baptism and the Lord's Supper. We ought to honor the secular powers by subject and ready obedience and the paying of tributes. They pay their taxes. <clears throat> Let me read you another little confession of faith. We believe that there is but one God, that He is Spirit, Creator of all things, God of all, who is over all and through all and in us all, and we ought to be, and He who ought to be worshipped in spirit and in truth, who alone we serve, and to whom we give glory our life and food and manner and health and sickness and profet prosperity and adversity and we love him as one who knoweth our hearts we believe that jesus christ is the son and the image of the father that in him dwells all the fullness of the godhead by whom we have knowledge of the father now 
we could just absolutely agree with this, couldn't we, today? Couldn't we agree with this same thing? There is only one mediator, an advocate, and that there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we may be saved, in whose name alone we call upon the Father, and use no other prayers than those which are contained in the Holy Scripture, or such other as are conformable unto them for substance. Number three article on this one. We believe the Holy Spirit is our comforter, proceeding from the Father and the Son, whose inspiration we make our prayers, being by Him renewed, who works in us all good works, and by whom we have the knowledge of all truths. Article number four. We believe, <clears throat> basically I'm going to concentrate this, condense it. We believe that the one holy church, which is the congregation of all the elect, and they're talking about churches now, of true believers, <clears throat> and faithful ones from every the beginning of the world to the end, where our Savior Christ is the head, that which is governed by His Word and conducted by His Spirit, and where with all good Christians ought to hold communion for the prayers and for without ceasing and that the word which she has agreed agreeable to God himself without which church no man may be saved they're talking about now when they talk about a church they're talking about those that have been born again those that uh, <clears throat> that are part of the great body, the family of God, and all of their little local churches, wherever they are, taking the Lord's Supper or, or whatever, they're part of this great assembly that, that we're going to see in heaven one of these days as the bride of Christ. Then it says, number five here, we hold that the ministers of the church as bishops and pastors ought to be irreprehensible as well in life as in doctrine and that otherwise they ought to be deprived of their office and others substituted in their places as likewise that none ought to presume to take upon him this honor but he who is called of God and and as Aaron leading the flock of God not for the sake of dishonest gain, nor as having any lordship over the, over the church, but as sincerely an example to his flock in word and, and conversation and charity, faith and chastity. Number six. We confess that kings and princes and governors are ordained and established by, as ministers of God, whom we ought to obey. For they do bear the sword of defense of the innocent, and for the punishment of evildoers, for which cause we are bound to give them honor and pay them tribute or taxes, from whose power none can be exempted himself, being likewise forbidden by the example of our Lord Jesus Christ, who was willing to pay tribute, not pretending jurisdiction over the temporal powers. Now they're going to talk about the the sacrament or the uh, baptism. We we'll believe in the baptism, water is the visible and a external sign which re represents unto us that which is invisible, virtue of God operating within us, namely that the renovation of the Spirit and the mortification of our members in Jesus Christ, by which we received into the holy congregation and the people of God there protesting and declaring openly our faith and amendment of life. Number eight, we hold that the holy sacrament of the table of our Lord Jesus Christ is a holy commemoration and giving thanks our benefits which we have received by his death and passion. We ought to be assembled together in faith and charity, examining ourselves so as to eat of this blessed bread and communicate of that his blood 
in the very same manner as he hath prescribed in the Holy Scripture. Article number nine. <clears throat> This is something the Catholic Church loves. Let's go back here and look at marriage. Back over here when the, when the church and the state became one, you had to get a license to get married. The Waldenses would not do that. The primitive Baptists would not do that. They would not go get a license for, salva for, for salvation because, you see, marriage had become a sacrament. And here we have all this stuff. We have the indulgences established. We have purgatory, Satan, image worship. And then among all of this, we have marriage. And we have uh, in 1100 A.D. now, 1123 A.D., we have celibacy established among the Catholic Church. And also they began to look upon marriage and, and sexual union as a sin. Something need to be abstained from. Sexual union in marriage to be abstained from, if you can believe that. The Catholic Church still teaches today that uh, except for procreation, uh, you should not cohabit with your spouse. As simple as that. That sex is a sin. But the Bible doesn't teach that, of course. We confess that marriage is good and honorable and holy and instituted by God himself, which ought not to be prohibited by any person provided that there be no hindrance specified by the word of God. We confess, number 10, that those who fear God from those things which are well pleasing to him and do those good works with which he has prepared to the end of that we should walk in them which are in love and joy and peace and patience, meekness and goodness and brotherly kindness and temperance and all other things continued and commanded in the Holy Scriptures. You see that in the Catholic Church they didn't practice a reformed or a, a consecrated life. You just remember the church and you just think like you did before and whatever. But when you're born again, the Holy Spirit comes into your life and changes your life. On the contrary, we confess that we ought to take heed and beware of false teachers whose scope and aim is to turn aside the people from true worship which belongs to our only God and Lord and to lean upon <coughs> creatures and to trust in them. Creatures, creation, other men. As likewise to forsake those good works we are contained and required in the Holy Scriptures and to do those which are only invented by men. We rule of the faith and practice now. We rule that the rule of faith and practice is the Old and New Testaments. We agree to the general confession of faith with the articles contained in the Apostles' Creed, namely, I believe in God the Father, Almighty. <clears throat> Here we have another brief confession of faith in 1532. We started out in 1100 A.D., but that one went back four or five hundred years. Now, the things that we read here in Baptist churches, we would agree, even today. Some some Baptists uh, are more hard-shelled than others. You speak more what we might call we're all Calvinists, supposedly, in Baptist Church. It's not because of Calvin, but because of what we believe. But some are a little bit more, what we might call, superlapsarian or infolapsarian or sublapsarian than others. And that it talks about election in here. Now, in our next lesson here, we're going to go all the way it tells us here to raise our children in the fear and the admonition of the Lord. Then we're going to talk about people. The real people that live here. I have lived from the middle of the 1940s now until 2024. That's a long time. I've lived a pretty long life. Some have lived much longer than me, of course. 
but in that period of time I have uh, seen a lot of things come and go. I saw America to be a place looked upon by all the world as a wonderful place, a, an asylum for freedom of religion and for freedom of thought, for a place that you could make a living, that you could grow, that you could grow your wealth, that you could have property, that you could pass it down to your children, etc., etc., etc. But now, a lot of times, a lot of people in America look upon America as an evil thing, that it's always been evil. But America <coughs> gave democracy to the world. But more than that, America would have never had the democracy that we have today if it hadn't been for Baptist people like you and me that stood for freedom of religion. If any other church, Mormons, occult, Presbyterians, John Calvin, Martin Luther, the Lutherans, all of these, when they had their chance to be state churches, they basically forbid all other religions, and they, even the Protestants persecuted, murdered, Baptist. We were called Wiener Toppers in Germany. That means uh, rebaptizers. And they were looked upon as the evil, like the boogeyman. Today, a lot of people are going to Baptist churches today that don't know what a Baptist is at all. One of the messages that I did the other day that should have hit one of the top downloads, which it actually did, that didn't give credit for it, was what is what a Baptist is, what a Baptist is. As we studied these church history classes, I hope that you understand what a Baptist is. A Baptist believes in the Bible. You go to churches today, <coughs> they put a little piece of Bible on the screen. They don't even encourage you to bring your Bibles to church, many times. If you're a Catholic, leave the Bible at home. Don't read it when you have it at home either, because it might confuse you. Even in some Protestant ranks, and even in some Baptist ranks, uh, never study the original language that will confuse you. The original language will straighten out your theology, people. Because the Bible is very strict in its interpretation from the original languages. It, it says what it says. But you've got to have enough gumption to study those languages. And these people taught that. They taught that their pastors needed to learn Greek and Hebrew and to bring in their vernacular language, whatever it was, most of it, this area was French and sometimes in some places German, that they ought to bring into those and preach what is in those original languages because that's where the inspired Bible is. It's not in the translations, it's in the original languages. And they said, bring that into those languages. <clears throat> Catholic Church never wanted anybody to, to translate the Bible at all. They didn't want the Bible in any... They, they forbid the Bible, remember, over here. Go back over here to 1200 and... Or, let's see, 1250... 1200, well, 1229. The Bible is forbidden in any in the Catholic Church. It's not only forbidden in the Catholic Church, but forbidden in the hands of anyone. People were burned at the stake for having one page of the Bible. And, of course, they had done this all the way back to here. When you take and you start teaching something contrary to the Bible, you've got to get the Bible out of their hands. We, we, we were brought into the Dark Ages by Catholicism and Islam. The Dark Ages. Ignorance. People were not much more than animals during that period of time, but they were Baptist all during that time. Preaching the Word of God. I am very, very pleased and very honored having the history library that I have. So I can bring what our people believed for 2,000 years to you today. Nearly 2,000 years since 30, about 30 AD. But it even goes back into Judaism. Some of the basic ideas of God and the, 
and the coming Son of God. Genesis 3.15 Our Father, we send this message out for the world to hear and see what your people believe and how much they have stood for freedom of religion and truth in the world. The foundation of Christianity came from your people. 